Hi, I'm Artie the Vintage Stitcher. I'm so glad you could be here today. So today is part two of our um, quilting tutorials, all right? We are working on a three hour gingham baby quilt. All right, last week was part one where we did our cutting. And um, this week we are gonna start sewing the strips together. So last week we did all the cutting for the baby quilt and what you should have in front of you today is your four light strips, all right? Your eight medium strips and four dark strips, all right? We are going to be working with a four light strips and four medium strips today and we're gonna be setting aside the other four medium strips and the four dark strips. That is gonna be a homework project, okay? That is something that you're gonna be working on for the next week and have those prepared for next week's lesson. All right, so I'm gonna veer off a little bit from the pattern, not much. Um, I'm gonna set this up. The pattern is, it's a beginner pattern and it's a great pattern, but I just feel like at this point, it's a little overwhelming for a beginner. So, um, if you are a confident beginner and you want to follow the pattern, go right ahead. If you are a, um, a little bit more experienced quilter and you've done quilts and before and you kind of know what you're doing and you're just quilting along just to have fun with us, absolutely follow the pattern and do it the way the pattern states, okay? If you are a brand new quilter, kind of just... Keep replaying, um, go step by step with me. It's gonna be a little bit easier. You'll be able to follow the pattern. I'm not veering off very much from the pattern. Um, I'm just taking it in a little bit smaller steps for you, smaller sections, so to speak. So if you're a very, very beginner quilter, follow me. If you are very short on space, if you are using a smaller board, okay? If you are um, working on a smaller card table or a smaller table, follow me, okay? Don't follow the pattern because the pattern is kind of laid out for somebody who has a big cutting table and a big ironing space. If you do not have that, um, it's going to be difficult. So follow me in this, in this area. All right, so what you're going to need today is your, um, your strips, your ruler, now somebody did ask me why I put this tape on there. Okay, so the reason I put the tape on the five and a half inch mark is it's a perfect visual aid, okay? Um, it helps you when you're cutting your strips and when we're cutting today, it's gonna be a visual aid for you to go, oh, that's my five and a half inch mark. I'm not gonna go beyond that or I'm not gonna cut five and a quarter inch. I'm, you know, I'm not going to miss cut. It's a visual aid for you. Um, it's, that's where I'm lining up my fabric. And I think I kind of missed, missed that step in explaining. I'm really sorry about that. But it's a, it's a great visual aid. We will be using our painter's tape again today on our sewing machine. So when we get to that point. So you will need your ruler with your painter's tape on it, your rotary cutter, your iron board, your mat, your iron, okay? <clears throat> so on the, on the pattern, it's telling you to sew a, what's called a strip set, okay? Um, of strip sets. And it's telling you to, to do a strip set of eight strips. We are going to break this down. Let me grab my pencil here. We are going to break this down into two strip sets at a time. For one, it's gonna be easier to handle. For two, I feel we get a better pressing on it. Um, and for three, it's just not as overwhelming as a whole set of strip set, a whole strip set that's 40 inches wide, okay? It's just gonna be easier. So we are going to sew a light to a medium, a light to a medium, a light to a medium a light to a medium. So we're going to do this, 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 this. 
okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to make two strip sets. We're going to sew these two to these two, these two to these two. So we're, instead of having one long strip set, we're going to have two strip sets of four, okay? So that's where we're going. And that's that's how we're going to break this up a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. So what I'm going to do, and so we're going to open up our strip sets. You're going to have your light. Get my iron going here. Your light and your medium color, okay? And you're going to place them right sides together. Now, if you want to pin them, feel free to pin them. Um, a lot of people are comfortable with pinning. That is fine. I'm not a pinner, okay? We are going to sew these from selvage edge to selvage edge. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're putting these right sides together and we are gonna sew along this edge, okay? Long way together. Doesn't matter if you have the medium on, on the top, it doesn't matter if you have the light on the top, you just sew them together, okay? It's gonna be a quarter inch seam or you can use the edge of your presser foot. Your presser foot on your machine is going to be approximately a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now let's talk machines. Every machine is different. Some machines, if you're if you're a new stitcher and you just have a basic machine, that's all you need. Okay, that's all you need. Um, I'm gonna let me take this off. All right. So most of you are going to have a presser foot that looks like this. Okay, you're going to have that on your sewing machine and it's going to, you know, lay flat like this. Your needle's going to be somewhere in the middle. Okay, it's going to lay somewhere in the middle. If you line up your fabric with the edge of this presser foot, so when you're sewing along, when you're sewing along, the edge of this presser foot is on the edge of this fabric and your needle is sewing along that is a fine seam allowance okay it does not have to be a, an exact quarter inch on this project it is going to work out just fine all right as long as you're consistent consistent throughout the entire project using that same seam allowance that same presser foot it is going to be fine Okay, if you want to get real technical and you want to use a quarter inch seam allowance, what you're going to do is, it's a little hard to see on, on the machine um, because I don't, ha I can't get the camera in close enough. Um, I don't have anybody help here helping me. What you would do is you would take your, your foot and you would take your needle, okay, and you would maybe take a small ruler like this okay and you would put this under your presser foot all right and you would bring your needle down you would bring your needle down on that quarter inch mark okay and then wherever that quarter inch mark is on the edge of your sewing machine you can put a piece of painter's tape and then what you're going to do is you would run your fabrics along the edge of that painter's tape. Does that make sense? So that would give you an exact quarter inch seam allowance. But like I said, on this project, if you're using a, just a basic machine, the edge of your presser foot, you're going to find if you put your little ruler in there, it's pretty close to a quarter of an inch. It pretty most standard machines are pretty close to a quarter of an inch. You're not going to be very far off. Consistency. I I made many many quilts using the edge of my presser foot for years and never had an issue. Um, there are no quilting police. 
I promise nobody's going to come and go, oh my God, your, your quarter inch seam isn't a quarter inch. It's fine. Okay. So use the edge of your presser foot. You're going to save yourself a lot of stress at this point. Once you get better quilting and once you've got a couple of quilts under your belt and once you start working with quilts with points and stars and stuff like that, then worry about your seam allowance. This stuff, just use your use the edge of your presser foot. You're going to be much happier. But you have to be consistent and you have to keep it a straight line, okay? Um, but if you wanted to use the painter's tape trick, that's the painter's tape trick. All right. Let me get this stock on there. I get all sorts of questions about thread. The only thing I want to tell you about thread is let's use a light color. Okay, let's use a white, a cream, a beige, um, a light gray, depending on your color choices for your fabric. Let's use the lighter color. Every machine is different. What my, what my machine likes for thread, your machine may not like. Um, they're like vehicles. They don't all like the same oil. Machines do not like all the same thread. So whatever thread your machine likes, a nice cotton basic sewing thread okay doesn't have to be fancy my machine likes certain threads that's the thread I buy my machine I have threads that I can't buy like I can't use YLI is it YLI thread it snaps it breaks it knots it does all sorts of things I've gone through I've cleaned it I've changed needles I've done everything it just really dislikes that thread cannot use that thread I can't use it. Whatever thread your machine likes is the thread you want to use. Okay? So, um, don't let anybody tell you, oh, you have to use this thread. You have to use this thread. Buy the best quality thread you can afford, but buy the, buy the, quali buy the thread that your machine loves. And everything will go great. Okay, I also use a 2.5 stitch length on my um, sewing. That's just, that's just a common stitch length, nothing fancy. Okay, let's get sewing. So I'm going to sew two of these, to get, two of these together. Um, let me set this aside. And I'm going to do it right here with you. Um, you're going to watch me sew, all right? So I'm just going to turn a little bit. And I'm going to show you right sides together, quarter inch seam, I just kind of hold my fabric, you don't have to be all scrunched up in here, okay, don't, don't do that, just relax, let the fabric flow, if you're, if you want to pin this, pin this, but I just kind of hold my fabric with my my fingers here and kind of feed it through. Let the machine do the work. Just kind of guide it in there. It's all going to stay in there nice and it's going to go in there nice and even. Just guide those fabrics together through. Voila, one's done, all right? So we're gonna put the other two aside. One's done. Okay, let me do one more and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to press them. Set this one on the side, all right. One more. Don't worry about ironing that crease out. We're gonna to get to that. Don't worry, okay? Right sides together, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what's on top, what's on bottom. It does not matter at this point. Okay, line them up and let it feed through. Just sit, relax, keep your body kind of relaxed. Don't be tense. Just kind of let it roll. It's gonna, you can, if, if all of a sudden it takes off and goes like this, you can rip it back and you can re sew it. There's no wrong. You're, it's, everything's fixable, all right? Everything is fixable. Remember that. You can do this. 
but if you're tense, your sewing is going to be tense. If you're relaxed, your sewing is going to be relaxed. Alright, voila, two strip sets, okay, so I set my, that aside, set this aside, I set my ruler aside for a minute because we're not going to use it. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the ironing board over, set this aside, <clears throat> pull my ironing board over, and I'm going to tip this, the camera down a little bit, so I, I'm sorry, I've got to reach, but I want you to see how I press this, this is, this is a very important part. This is going to kind of not make or break the quilt, but it just gives it a better finish. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to lean forward. I'm going to bring this down. All right. <clears throat> so this is, this is my seam. You can't see it because I'm using neutral thread. This is, it's sewn together. See? All right. So what I do is when I'm pressing a quilt, my rule of thumb is I press to the darker fabric or when I'm piecing, piecing, I press to the, the one with the least amount of seams. Okay. So when you get deeper into quilting, you're going to be pressing like more, more and more blocks. You always want to go to the darker fabric or to the side that has the least amount of seams. So that's kind of rule of thumb. So <clears throat> I use steam. Some people don't use steam. I use steam. Um, some people use starch. There's no right or wrong way. You do what you want. There's no right or wrong way. The only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to just like rub and stretch and push. Okay. But I start with my fabric closed and I heat set that seam. And what that's going to do is it's going to set the fibers of that thread. Okay. When you add, when you add heat to thread, it expands and it sets, it sets like a, a form. It's kind of like when you're knitting and you like block it, it kind of holds that shape. <clears throat> thread does the same thing. So I always come by and I kind of warm that thread up. All right. And then what I do is I have my darker fabric on the top. And then I very gently just flip that open. And that seam is going to naturally go in the direction that I want it to go in. Okay. So it's naturally going to go towards that darker fabric. And then what I do is I come back and I just gently press it open. Okay. Give it a shot see. Nothing wrong with that. And you're going to get a nice flat seam. And then I just slide this strip set down. And keep doing that. And then you're going to come to that crease where the fabric was folded and that will all press out. Okay. All right. And you do that for this whole strip set. Okay. <clears throat> and you're going to have nice, crisp, flat seams. Okay. So there's one set. We're going to set this aside. <clears throat> Did I do the other one? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Leave it to me. Okay. So then you're going to do this. And, you know, I go through and I sew all my strip sets. And then I come through and I iron all my strip sets. And then I go through and I'll sew another batch of stuff. I'm kind of a production sewer. But you do it however you feel you can stay organized. All right. There's no right or wrong way. There's, it's not a race. It's really not a race. You do it how you want to do it. <sighs> I'm a production sewer because I've always had to be. I owned a store. 
I've worked for fabric companies. I've always kind of been under a deadline with my sewing. So I tend to do things a lot quicker than, than the average person. Um, but when I can just sit down and relax and sew, it, it's a great feeling. So, <clears throat> so like I said, you can make all your strip sets, then you can iron all your strip sets, and then you can go on to the next step and you can sew a batch, and then you can come back and iron. However you want to do it. You can do one block at a time. Whatever makes you happy, okay? So we're going to just open that up, and we'll press into the darker fabric. Now, when we do this <clears throat> with the, the medium and the dark strip sets, you're going to do the same thing, except your medium fabric is going to be considered your lighter fabric, and your dark fabric is going to be your darker fabric. So you're going to, you're going to press towards that dark fabric. So remember that. <clears throat> You have a little bit of stubborn wrinkles. Just give it a little shot of steam. Like I said, you don't want to just get in there and crank on that because you don't want that. You don't want that fabric to distort. You just want to gently press it. There's a difference between pressing and ironing. All right. <clears throat> so now we have two of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our pattern. And remember, like I said, we have two here. We're going to sew those two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking these two strip sets and I'm sewing them together. Medium light. Medium light. Okay. So I'm just taking this right sides together. And I'm going to sew them together. All right, here we go. So it's a little bit bigger this time. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bulkier. But we're only going, we're going to do this. That, and this is why I didn't want to do a whole set of eight like this. Um, it's just a little overwhelming. those edges lined up together. I got stuff falling over. My, <laughs> my machine shakes a little bit. Okay, so now we have our strip set, okay? And the way it's gonna look is they want light, medium, light, medium. That's, and that's what we got. Light, medium, light, medium, okay? <clears throat> so now we're gonna press this. We're gonna press this. We're gonna do the same thing. Oops, got all these papers here. Same thing to the dark fabric. Keep that dark fabric up. The dark fabric up. Warm up that warm up that seam. And it's going to be a little bit bigger this time, so Okay, and kind of give that a flip. That, that seam is gonna go where you want. If it's not going where you want, don't feel bad. Stick your hand under there and kind of just give it a little guide, okay? <clears throat> give it a little pull. Sometimes you'll have a fabric that wants to go rogue. And you have to, you have to put it where you want it and you have to tell it what to do. 
Um, but most of the time, most of the time fabric is pretty well behaved. <clears throat> And these get bigger. These get bigger. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to do this in a small space. Okay. Okay. So now here's what you have. You have a strip set of four. Okay. Just like on your pattern. But they want you to have a strip set of eight. Okay, we're going to do two sets of four. Okay, just because it's going to be easier to handle and it's going to be easier to cut. And I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this. We're going to go to the cutting next. Okay, and we're, we're still going to get to the row part. We're going to make our rows today. So I'm done ironing at this point. Or for right at this second. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to set my ironing board aside. So you are going to make two of these. Remember, we have we have the extra two um, medium and two light over here I set aside. So we're making two of these. So I'm going to kind of stand so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I have this strip set. I am going to fold this in half selvage to selvage. I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to raise the camera up a little because I want you to have a vet better view of, of how I'm cutting this. Just one moment. Okay, now we have a good view of that. Let me come back around. So, what I'm doing with this strip set, okay, this is the four. I'm folding it in half, okay, and I'm lining up my top edges okay and I'm smoothing this out smoothing this out and making sure my seams are, are relatively close together I mean they don't have to be perfect you don't stress about perfection it's all gonna work out in the end okay you don't want them like totally cattywampus but it's gonna be all right all right and this is why I wanted to do two sets of four, because this is an easier way to cut, okay? So you're gonna do this with both sets of four, okay? So now we have this selvage edge over here that we need to clean up. So we are gonna do our cross cutting now. Now we are gonna start making our rows for our quilt. This is where you need your ruler with your five and a half inch tape marking on it okay the first thing we have to do is we have to clean up these salvage edges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of eyeball kind of where that salvage edge because you don't want that in there and I'm going to take off as little as possible and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the markings on my ruler to line up one of the horizontal markings over here with the horizontal edge of my fabric or my strip set, either top or bottom, whatever you're more comfortable with, okay? Doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna trim that off, just like that, all right? Now you have a nice, clean work surface. Do not move this, okay? Because what you're going to do, now remember you have two layers here. What you're going to do is you're going to learn, work that edge of your tape or your five and a half inch mark. You're going to put that along your work edge, your horizontal line here along the edge of your fabric, and you're going to cut. Okay, lift your ruler. This is called cross cutting or sub cutting in patterns. That's what you're going to see that. That's what it's going to, that, that, this is what they mean when they say sub cutting or cross cutting in a pattern. Okay. And you're going to do this all the way down your strips. Okay.
Okay. So now we have six there. Okay, now you're looking at this and going, all right, now that's not five and a half inches wide. So I'm going to show you a little trick. <laughs> so what I do then is I take this and I open this up. Okay. And I can get one more out of this. And because we're going to be making two of these, you're going to get a, another one like this. So you're going to get an even amount. Okay. All right. And then you just have your trim. Okay. So there's your subcuts. All right. But our rows, when it's now, see, that's where they're telling you to do the subcuts down here at five and a half inches. See how they're doing that? But they're telling you to make five rows that are eight across. Ours are only. I'm going to set these aside. Ours are only four across, right? All you're going to do is you're going to take two of them and you're going to sew them end to end. And let me do that real quick. You sew them end to end. So I'm going to sew that end to end like that. I'm going to bring that over to my pressing board and I'm going to press that towards that medium color fabric. Just that one seam. You don't have to repress that whole row, okay? And there we have our rows. There we have our rows, just like in the diagram. Starts off with a light. A light, medium, light, medium, light, medium, light, medium. Just like in. So this is one row of your quilt. All right. So we need to do that. We need to make four more of those with your strip sets. So you have to make your extra strip set. And then you also, then you have to do the same thing with your medium and dark okay same exact thing we're going to do it exactly the same way and then you're going to have your medium and dark rows all right next week we will um put the rows together so i'm going to adjust this and then i'm going to talk to you just for a moment okay so we've got our rows together I hope, I really hope I went through everything really clearly. If you have any, any questions at all throughout the week or while you're doing this, please, please either leave a comment below and I will try and answer it during a comment or email me, vintagestitcherstash at gmail.com. That email is always in my description. You can try and catch me on Instagram. I'm not on Instagram very much. I'm at, at from the hard quilts. Um, but this is what you're going to work on. So next week, what you need to have done is you need to have your four rows of light and medium or five rows, five rows of light and medium and five rows of medium and dark. And then we're going to start putting our rows together. I'm going to show you that. Um, yeah. And then we'll have our quilt top done and then we will move on to um, basting it. You know, picking our batting, picking our backing, basting it, and machine quilting it on, on our machines. Okay, I'm going to go over some of that with you too. So exciting. Very exciting. I hope everybody's learning a lot. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or if you feel I did not go over something well enough, uh, please let me know. I can either bring it up in next week's video. I can, re I can go over something again. Um, or I can answer it in an email or whatever you need to do. Um, good luck this week. I, I'm, this is a fun quilt. This is a really fun quilt. Um, so 
If you're loving the channel and you're loving the tutorials and you would love to see more quilt alongs like this, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, comment, like, thumbs up, all that stuff. It really does help the channel grow and it helps me to be able to stay home from my day job, which is always a plus, and um, bring you more content like this. So um, while you're out in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.